Hi, Jason and Tony Butts of Forge Legacy here. Today, we're gonna to pull back the curtain to share with you a recent disagreement we had to share with you how to look at things a little deeper than the surface mm -hmm. to resolve the issue that's underlying. Mm. Misunderstandings occur all the time in marriages. Two good-willed people can end up at odds with one another over the most trivial of circumstances. Mm. Generally, today we're talking gender specific. I feel this way as a woman, he feels this way as a man. However, if you do not fit the way I feel or the way he feels, there's nothing wrong with you. And there's nothing wrong with us. It's reality that there are things that are just different, not wrong. Mm. It's all good. Just take from it what you can to see that two people think differently. Mm. So here's the background of the situation. We had our roof redone, and with that, the gutters came off the front of the house because they were going to be replaced. But we wanted to save those gutters so that we could use them at a later date to put on the back of the house because we don't have gutters on the back of the house. So the safest place in our yard to put those gutters was inside the garden fence. And so that's where I placed them for future use. So my wife eventually needed to be able to plant the plants in her garden this spring. And she had asked me to make sure that on a certain day she was going to plant and she needed those gutters removed so she could access all of the garden beds. And that's how the situation started. Well? What happened? Well, I said, yes, I'll take care of that for you. The next day happens to be that she's going to plant. I'm out of town doing work. She calls me halfway through the day and says, babe, did she say it like that? She said, babe, the gutters are not out of the garden. I cannot plant, and I needed to be able to plant today. Now, one, I had forgotten. I said that I'd take care of it, and I didn't. That's my mistake. Accidents happen. Yep, it can happen. I forgot. But what really became the situation beyond that is that I said, well, here's a solution, hon. You can still reach most of the gardens probably 90, 95% of the garden beds you can still reach. They're accessible even with the gutters inside the garden fence. Now, that hurt Tony. That made it sound like it was an excuse, and I wasn't willing to just say, I'm sorry, because I had forgotten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. I was hurt by that. I There, there was, because of a variety of reasons, I couldn't do what I needed to at that time, and I just needed him to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. And so right there at that point in time, I didn't acknowledge, I didn't say I'm sorry, and I gave a solution. All of that together, it felt like it was manipulation. Mm -hmm. It felt like it, it actually built some distrust. And it can appear to be narcissistic as if the putting the blame back on the person that was having the issue, blame shifting. And so I forgot to do what Tony asked me to do. And then I made a solution, which seemed nothing more than an excuse to her. I was, I was not intending to seem manipulative in what I was doing, but stepping back, that's of course how it looked. Mm -hmm. Now, to begin with, everything would have been different if I would have followed through on what I said I was going to do. Make sure if you say you're going to do something, take care of it. This would have taken two minutes for me to take care of this, and she would have been set. The scenario wouldn't have even existed. But scenarios like this do exist in every relationship under the sun because you have two imperfect people, and each with their own thoughts and assumptions and and triggers, right, unhealed places. And so we have to be able to look past that and look back at mm -hmm. so that we don't place things on a shelf and harden our hearts or push that person away in some way, but actually grow together so we build bridges of connection and community in Absolutely. it. Absolutely. This could have been avoided if Jason just said, I'm sorry I messed up. In my mind, that repentance was absolutely key. Again, it wasn't even about the garden beds. It was about, hey, 
I just need to know that, that you recognize that hurt me. Immediate recognition of the mistake was critical to me without making any excuses or any blaming. Mm. So repentance is key. And she really was hurt. Yes, that I forgot, but even more that it sounded like I was making an excuse for forgetting and taking care of it. That may seem confusing to a guy, but that's not confusing to a woman. That's the way she feels. And that's the way she felt. And so what happened is I wasn't quick to acknowledge and to recognize what I had done wrong. And that exacerbated the situation. I'm sure you've experienced situations like that yourselves. So you can use words like, I'm sorry, or please forgive me, or I apologize. Those are, those are important words to use. But we're not talking about uh, cheap grace. We're not talking about, uh, you know, just uh, not being authentic with being sorrowful. It's not, oh, I'm sorry, or whatever, or forgive me, that kind of thing. It's, there needs to be a heartfelt repentance. That's where repentance is the key. It's at the heart of, I am truly sorry. Honey, will you please forgive me? I did forget. And then I didn't even recognize it right away. Or maybe you do recognize it right away. Make sure that you're authentic with your communication with your spouse. That's really where things can either be saved or they can blow up. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, became, it became a little bit of a situation for us. And so we wanted to help. We, we healed it in Jesus' name. We healed it. We understood it as we unpacked it more. We wanted to make sure we took a little bit of time to help you understand that as well. Yours might not be a garden fence. Maybe not. Can be other issues along the way. We Absolutely. all have them. It's okay. The bottom line is that she wanted A, to d be taken care of before she would even consider B. Mm -hmm. So what are we talking about? Well, for A, I just wanted relationship and authenticity. I wanted him to apologize to me, not make excuses for his behavior, for that which he didn't do, or seemingly avoid talking about that. I just wanted him mm. to say, I'm sorry. I didn't do what I promised. Mm. That builds a lot of security in a woman when she knows that. Mm. She wanted A. B, I offered a viable solution, or so I thought. I thought it was still possible for her to plant that day. She still had access to over 90% of the garden beds. I was troubleshooting the problem. However, she wanted me to acknowledge that I, was, I had forgotten mm -hmm. and acknowledge A before ever providing for her a solution B. Because relationships matter to me. <laughs> yes, they do. The solution was not as important as the relationship is to her. Here's the paradox that can exist between a husband and a wife. The husband, well, I sought to provide a viable solution for my wife's dilemma. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wanted him to acknowledge he forgot something that was important to me. Mm. Yet, it all boils down to A, is her desire for authenticity and connection with her husband, regardless of the problem that needs to be solved. B, is his attempt to provide a solution for the problem while neglecting her feelings. Wow. However, she wants A, to be taken care of before she would ever consider B. And I'm going to say you probably don't have any feelings about the garden. I didn't. None. Not at all. It's very important. This is a huge part of communication within marriage. Understanding what the woman needs in this scenario. And? And, uh, and what the man needs, but also the man understanding, okay, she doesn't really want the solution right now. She wants me to listen. She wants me to acknowledge. She wanted me to take care of it first, but... It wasn't the garden, it wasn't the gutters in the garden anymore that was what she wanted taken care of ultimately. Once I forgot, it was she wanted the relationship taken care of. I did. And I was still focused on the gutters in the garden, the actual task, and I missed it. That's how arguments can happen. Yes. This can lead to 
frustration for the husband. He knows he messed up, but he wants to remain objective and give her a solution. There's nothing wrong with that, mm -hmm. but it still spells, uh, and, he's, and he still thinks, I love you, and I'm thinking of you in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for the wife, yeah. it's different. For the wife, she wants the original task followed through on, but the, uh, that what is happening, the relationship trumps mm. everything else. Yes. The relationship trumps everything else. That, that apologetic, sympathetic piece matters. Then there's the security built, and then from there, all kinds of good things can be accomplished. The task can still be accomplished. Mm when that relationship is secure. Yes, that's the key. Men, I charge you in this, 1 Peter 3, 7. In the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should, so your prayers will not be hindered. That's huge. <laughs> and Colossians 3.19, husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Wow. Mm. And ladies, we need to remember Proverbs 21.9 as we're communicating with our husbands. It's better to live in the corner of the housetop than in a house shared with a quarrelsome wife. We may have things to say to our husbands, but the way how we share our concerns matters to God, to him, to our children, to a watching world. Mm. Let's pray. Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the gift of marriage. It is a gift because together we can accomplish more than separately. But Lord, there are things that you recognize because of the fall that have created in us areas where we have allowed miscommunication to take over and actually caused hardness of heart in some areas. We ask for your vision and we repent for all the areas that we have put on a shelf because we have said we're not going to deal with those things. It's too hard. It's too complicated. Lord, we acknowledge that there's nothing too difficult for you. We bring it all to the foot of the cross. Every last hurt, every last confusion, every doubt. And we say, Jesus, have your way. Have your way in our marriages so that we understand one another and build each other up, recognizing each other as different on purpose so that we can actually not be two eyes or two ears or, or two feet, but we can be different body parts as you call us to be as members of one body in your word according to in the New Testament. Paul says it so many times. We're, we're the body of Christ. You are calling us to be the body, even in our homes. And so that means our functions are different. And that means we might think differently and move differently. But let us walk in unison under your banner of love. Jesus, we look forward to what you're going to do. It's in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. If you've been encouraged by this message, we ask that you would share it with other people, that you would subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you would follow us on our socials. Connect with us as well. You can also connect with us at our website at forgealegacy.net. We'd love to hear from you. We want you to know that no matter what you're going through, what you feel like, what's going on in your life, you're not alone. You are not alone. Do whatever it takes to be healed so you can be all that you were destined to be. Do whatever it takes because forging a legacy